What is going on, guys? It is a special episode of LSU Recruiting HQ. Um, today is Thursday, August 10th, uh, year 2023, and it is recruiting season, and it is on fire right now. Uh, today is the day that Caden Durham and Colin Simmons committed uh, from Duncanville. As you all probably know, um, this is probably about an hour and a half old when we're recording this, so we'll go ahead and tell you guys the news. Uh, Colin Simmons, five-star defensive end, ends up committing to the University of Texas, but LSU does grab one of the two superstars from Duncan, and they grab Caden Durham, a four-star running back, a top 10 running back in the nation. Uh, guys, Frank Wilson and the staff went all in on this one. Um, with the recruiting class coming in next year, the running back class in the state of Louisiana next year, uh, they could really turn their focus to this one guy in the 2024 class, and that's what they did. And they get Caden Durham, an Oklahoma legacy guy, um, you know, stiffs the Sooners here um, for the commitment towards the Tigers after visiting. He didn't even take an official visit to LSU. Um, still... LSU gets the commitment from Caden Durham, four-star running back out of Duncanville. But like everybody wants to talk about the Colin Simmons thing, um, obviously this one doesn't go LSU's way. Um, we see a lot of recruitments that end up like this, but they end up going in LSU's favor more than likely because this is a kid who had family on his mind, who wanted to be close to home, and, and at the end of the day, uh, Texas was the only place um, that was going to be able to fit those needs for him. Not saying LSU did everything they could uh, to get this kid um, to Baton Rouge. Um, he took the most visits out of any school to LSU. His last two visits were to LSU before he even committed, which is why the hype kind of surrounded it. Um, but in the end, he does end up choosing the University of Texas. And I know a lot of people are upset about this. Um, not really upset, but, um, you know, obviously you want a kid like that to come to LSU. There's no denying you want the best players. Um, and he is one of the best players in the country for for a lot of different reasons. 22 and a half sacks last year as a junior. Um, but he will be playing football in Austin, Texas. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, wait, um, it's a long recruitment. Um, guys, I kind of felt this way even if he would have picked LSU today. Um, obviously, it would have been a great to know that LSU was that, that team um, that he was committed to. But knowing that December is a long ways away, um, I always felt in the end of this recruitment um, with family and being home, such a big priority to him that Texas was always probably going to be the pick. And LSU really had to knock it out the park um, with this one. And it, not saying they didn't. The reason it was so close is because they did knock it out the park. They did have to make him think about this kind of decision. Um, it wasn't the easiest decision in the world for him. Um, that's why nobody up until the time they announced really knew where he was going. Um, so that being said, but I got a feeling Colin Simmons um, was going to be a Texas guy, no matter if he committed to LSU or Texas today. Um, but I thought Texas put in all their chips for him. Um, and this was a guy they had to have going into the SEC. You can't lose a battle like this um, in your backyard. Um, a guy you've recruited forever now uh, wants to stay home. Um, you can't let a guy like that get out of state. And they didn't. Credit to them. They put all their chips in this basket. Um, they got the guy they wanted. And that's a huge win for Texas recruiting. Um, that being said, today, like I said, was not a lost cause. LSU by far blew it away today. Um, they get Caden Durham. They're on the table for Colin Simmons. Um, obviously, Colin Simmons is going to read all the headlines, but Caden Durham is no slouch, guys. Um, a huge superstar running back out of Duncanville Powerhouse High School football team there in Texas. Um, had 36 touchdowns last year as a junior and he will be coming in next year as a true freshman uh, like i said 
a Oklahoma guy. Uh, dad ran track. Mom went there. Uh, Oklahoma seemed to be the favorite for a long time with this kid, but LSU made it happen, man. And Frank Wilson and Brian Kelly did a tremendous job of recruiting this kid, and he ends up signing or not signing, but committing to the Tigers. Um, uh, like I said, a huge get. LSU jumps from number ten to number six in the on three. Uh, team rankings which is huge everybody was worried about class rankings about two and a half weeks ago um that's all i heard about was lsu was outside the top 10 and that this class is not good um but here we are lsu sits at a number six class and uh that's kind of what we're going to go into now is like where do they go from here um in years past uh before last year's cycle, you could only sign 25 kids. That's not the case anymore. LSU currently has 26 committed players um, in this 2024 class, which is a big number already. So now I look for them to uh, key in on a certain amount of guys, probably three to four guys that they're going to recruit really hard, which is really good for LSU fans because these are guys that they want. These are guys not that necessarily that they need, but they want. Um, and those two guys obviously start with the two guys in Louisiana. McKinley Jackson, five-star defensive lineman out of Acadiana, the Lafayette area. LSU just doesn't lose kids from Lafayette. Um, and I don't see this one being any different. Granted, everybody has them projected to go somewhere else right now. Um, but there's still a long way to go. Even if he ends up committing to another school in the next couple weeks, I still like LSU's chances here down the stretch, kind of like with the Colin Simmons thing. Um, kids don't want to leave this state. Kids from Lafayette don't leave LSU. Um, <clears throat> now, the Wardell Mack one is a little bit on edge. Um, you know, he missed the Bayou Splash, ends up taking a visit to Florida. Um, Texas is the recruiting predictor leader right now. Um, <clears throat> but LSU is still right in the thick of it for this guy, too. Um, a four-star defensive back, a top 150 recruit um, right there in New Orleans. Um, this is another guy. You have the top two players in Louisiana on most recruiting services. Um, still not committed. You have eight of the other 10 of the top 10 committed to you right now. Um, what a better way to cap off this class. You for sure, if you land one of those two guys, uh, you're sitting with the top five class most likely. Um, you land both of them, you're for sure in there, probably knocking on the top three, um, if we're being honest there. Um, and another couple guys to keep your eyes out for, um, Elijah Thurman, um, a guy from Hinesville, Georgia, interior offensive lineman, not the highest rated guy, just picked up an offer this summer at camp. Um, at LSU has offers from all over the country LSU makes his top eight that's a guy that Brad Davis is going after hard Brad Davis continues to push for Blake Ivy um, kid out of Texas League City Texas he's an A&M guy right now um, but that could easily change he's a top one to 50 guy um, so big fish right there um, but LSU still remains in the mix for him. LSU remains in the mix for uh, Elijah Thurman um, out of Georgia. So those are two big time. I got a feeling LSU probably signs no more than two or three more uh, guys out of this class. I wouldn't think they would go anywhere closer to 30. You're probably sitting at that 28 range, 29 you probably don't get to 30, which is absolutely okay with the new rules. Obviously, you have the scholarship rule now, you, so you can sign as many as you lose type thing after 25. Um, so that's going to work out in LSU's favor. But like I said, that's kind of the recruiting approach um, that LSU is going to take the rest of this cycle. Um, big fish hunting, man. Um, that's what Brian Kelly's going to be doing. Going to have to lock up McKinley Jackson now that you've lost on Colin Simmons to get that real star power in this class. Um, you can't lose guys like that um, out of the Lafayette area, um, especially to out-of-state school in Texas that, you know, could be, you know, could outdo you for two of the best defensive linemen in the country. That wouldn't be a good look. Um, but I fully got confidence in Brian Kelly and the staff uh, that McKinley Jackson to end up being an LSU Tiger. Now, Wardell Mack, on the other hand, 
uh, is a little bit more 50-50. If I had to pick someone now, it would not be LSU. I wouldn't even have LSU in the top two. Um, I would have Florida and Texas out front right now. Um, but like I said, in-state school, always recruiting them, always staying in touch. Uh, Florida obviously has the Louisiana ties with Jabbar J- uh, Jaluk and then uh, Corey Raymond over there in Florida. And then Texas is recruiting at a, a great level right now. Um, they get you know Derek Williams last year uh, out of Westgate, New Iberia area last year, um, going after Bordell Mack hard and then obviously going after McKinley Jackson as well. Um, so they're starting to get a little footprint in the state of Louisiana. But those are four guys that I'd keep an eye out on. Um, McKinley Jackson announced that he might be committing soon. Wardell Mack, same thing, could possibly be committing uh, before these high school seasons kind of kick off. Um, but those recruitments won't be over until the December signing period for sure, especially if they end up going somewhere out of state or committing to somewhere out of state. Um, LSU is always going to be in the race for those two guys. So. That's all I got for you guys today, man. I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Nice and quick for you guys. Breaking the news on Caden Durham and Colin Simmons. Uh, unfortunate for LSU. They couldn't land both of them. Um, but they definitely got a power packed in uh, running back in Caden Durham. And so that is all I got for you guys today, man. You guys have a blessed rest of your weekend. I will see you next time.